Every season of Survivor is a story, but sometimes that story can be told over the course of multiple seasons. Some players will have two part stories, while others can play four or even five times and have a much longer tale. Why do some players rise and fall and never recover, while others can fall and still get back up and succeed? Today, we are going to follow the incredible story of Tom Westman, who first played on Survivor's 10th season, Survivor Palau. 39 days, 20 people, one Survivor. Tom Westman, a 40-year-old firefighter from Long Island, New York, was a castaway on Survivor's 10th season, Survivor Palau. By the time he finished playing, he took the idea of being a noble and honor-bound player to the next level while also mixing in a surprising amount of Boston Rob's Godfather gameplay. So how did Tom do? Let's find out. Survivor Palau takes a page out of Pearl Island's book and has Jeff rolling up on a speedboat saying, hey guys, guess what? The game starts now, all you have are the clothes on your back, and uh, the first two to make it to shore win individual Community. Okay, bye. But I suggest you make a decision and start acting now because this game is on. Good luck. As all 20 players then paddled to shore, along the way, two players decide to jump in way too early and try to outswim the boat with still a mile or so to go to the shore. Thankfully for Tom, he does not make this mistake. As everyone arrives on the beach and tries to figure out what the heck should we be doing, we're all together but there's no tribes, we see some people getting water, others are modifying their regular clothes for island life, whereas Tom is doing everything he can to avoid making fire. You know, it was funny, I mean, uh, everybody's just walking around in different directions. <laughs> Let's get the water, let's build a shelter. And uh, you just gotta watch that, you know? I had a few people try to wrangle me into doing the fire and I'm just like, that's a loser job, man. As it turns out, Janu looks like she may be a spider monkey from the way she climbs trees with ease to cut things down. Tom is very impressed. He then talks to Stephanie and cuts a deal with her to make an alliance with himself, Ian, who got one of those immunity necklaces, and Katie. Press the sun. <laughs> Beating down on me all day long. Ian. Maybe you just an early something here. Yeah. I'm in with that with you guys. No. We would Thank be strong. You. This is really unprecedented. Everyone doesn't know what to expect. Will there be a tribal council? When will tribes officially form? Who knows? Well, Jeff Probst does know what's going to happen, and on day two, he emerges from the woods to say, hey guys, Ian and Jelana are the tribe's captains, and they will be starting a snake draft to see who will be on each tribe. However, only 18 of you will be picked, and two of you will not. Ian picks Katie, who in turn picks Tom, keeping him safe in the game. Tom. Now, unfortunately for Tom and for Stephanie, she gets picked by the other tribe before Tom ever gets a chance to draft her. So he picks his next best option instead. I'm gonna take Janu. Janu, still in the game and relieved. By the end of the tribe's snake draft, the Oolong tribe is clearly physically stronger, while Karor is uh, the older tribe to say the least. Now an interesting stat to keep in mind is that the average age of Oolong is 29, while Karor's average age is 36. Oolong has two players over the age of 30, and Karor has five. It reminds me a bit of how the tribes were selected in Thailand when Chuigon were clearly the older tribe, but ended up steamrolling Sukjai. Either way, Karor looks on its face to be a weaker tribe. Now, the Two players who are unfortunately eliminated are Jonathan and Wanda, and this is truly not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but Wanda is amazing, and I am now going to show all of her highlights through her time on Survivor. We are survivors! We're gonna build a fort gladly. We are survivors! survivors. Completely unnecessary, but totally worth it. Anyways, in the first immunity challenge, Karor pulls a rabbit out of their hat and actually stomps Oolong by making wise decisions and by working together instead of fighting like Oolong does. <laughs> Karor wins immunity and reward! Yeah! 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 
Jeff Probst then offers Karora a choice. Stick with the beautiful beach that they have been living on so far that has a lot of space with a cave nearby, or try their luck and pick a completely new campsite, sight unseen. Karora ends up picking the new camp as seemingly led by Tom, and this is a dumb risk as the camp they already had was great. What do you say, Tom? Well, I see a beach we already saw. Let's go see something new. Okay. You're gonna take your chances. You're gonna take your chances. On their way to the new camp, another surprise happens as they accidentally flip the boat over and lose their fire supplies at the bottom of the ocean. We don't have the water. We don't have the flint to start a fire, to boil the water and purify it. We lost everything we want today. We're in a worse scenario than we originally had. And that is it for the premiere of Survivor Palau. So far, we have seen Tom be a player who is willing to take charge on not only forming an alliance of multiple people, but also when it comes to his tribe. The immunity challenge showed how much faster and stronger he is during the obstacle course, and at the rate he is going, there will be a target on his back that will just be too big to ignore. So will he be able to do it? Episode 2 begins and the question on all of our minds is, did the new camp work out? It was a dumb risk, but it was offered to the winning tribe, so maybe it was like a reward. Maybe it's a better beach. Surely it has to be since it was offered to them, right? <laughs> when I first saw the rant, saw three of them, and they were just going to town. It isn't, and Tom is blamed for the decision by multiple players, despite his claim that it wasn't just him who made this call. Tom, I, I love the, uh, mm -hmm. the new camp site choice. Really? Although, do you think there could be a worse island than this? Unfortunately, it was the wrong decision. Oh well, we're here. Get over it. However, when Karen comes at him with a lot of fervor, he is able to handle her very well without losing his cool, showing a lot of his people skills right off the bat. I thought we should go back too, and then three guys, or three people, were all saying, no, let's go to a new place where I had a coconut. Can yeah, we agree that let's... we should have a vote? Definitely. Even if it's if it just says you have yep. to make a decision. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay guys, raise your hand. Who wants to go? Stay, raise if you okay. want to go. At the reward challenge, tribe mates have to cross a series of obstacles while the opposing tribe lobs bags at them. And when Tom does this to Bobby John of Oolong, it just sets him off. Bobby John's on the court. Get that bag off me! Karor ultimately loses reward, and back at camp, Tom and Ian get to work on recovering those fire supplies from the bottom of the ocean. After quite a bit of hard work together, they pull it off. <laughs> At the immunity challenge, it is a grueling one as the tribe has to pull a heavy box underwater and then solve a puzzle. Tom is shown to be doing most of the physical labor underwater and seems to be very vocal during the puzzle as well. Episode 3 starts off with a reward challenge, which has the castaways competing against each other to get rings to their platform. I feel like that's the simplest way to explain this. Anyways, Tom goes head to head with Jeff of the Oolong tribe in round 1 and... Ultimately, Karor does get swept and loses the reward challenge. Back at camp, Tom, Ian, and Greg are on the hunt for snakes. They find a cave filled with these dangerous sea snakes, but despite us seeing some fear from Ian and Greg, Tom shows none, and he even makes a bad dad joke about killing one. Oh, no. Once they hang the snakes on the trees, they learn something fun and kind of dangerous. The uh, the hanging snakes are attracting sharks to their beach, which for a normal person would cause them to run away. But for Tom and Ian, well, they are now wielding pointy sticks that should stand no chance of piercing a shark's skin and uh, in, the, in their attempts to kill it. We kind of let the carcasses of the snakes hang out. As soon as we hung them from the tree over the water, we also noticed that a young shark came swimming and kept making closer passes to it. I think they're interested in that. Let's see if we can, uh, there he is, there he is, holy, oh, he saw me. 
Gosh, he came so close. Those sticks stand no chance. Uh, they don't kill any sharks yet. Anyways, the immunity challenge is a grueling one as both tribes try to chase the other one down while carrying heavy bags that weigh 20 pounds each. If a tribe member drops out of the challenge, then they have to give their bag to someone else who is still remaining in the game. Tom clearly leads his tribe, and after a while, Karor and Oolong are whittled down to three members each, and slowly, but surely, Karor catches up and wins immunity. They ran out. Look at them. They can't go to the challenge too fast. We can. So let's do it. Immunity at stake. Come on! Karor wins the third immunity challenge in a row. Woo! Episode 4 has both tribes receiving a mysterious note that tells them to designate one team member to do a task that they won't know about until later. Karor gathers around and holds a discussion about this, but despite Kobe volunteering to be selected, Tom strong arms the group into picking Ian instead. I would do it. I would do it. Ian, you've made many good decisions you've been the team leader here you want to go i say you go and this not only shows the trust tom has with ian but kobe points out how tribal lines are the clearest they've ever been and tom is in the majority the separation of the group was just obvious katie jennifer greg ian and tom are one unit so that makes five against four as it turns out the mysterious task is to lead their tribe in the next reward challenge and they are tasked with building a bathroom whoever builds the best one wins survivor production coming to their camp and making them the best shelter the show has ever seen so far. While working on the bathroom, Willard points out that he witnesses how Tom and Ian are sure to give every member of the tribe a compliment once a day. Willard really does his best to paint Tom as the leader and how he is key to making Karor work. If you watch Tom and Ian, they're very careful not to go through the day without saying in front of the group something good about everybody in the group. Tom is a, a leader. That's what he does for a living. He's highly motivated. He works hard. He's our little motor. It makes the train run. Despite Willard's high praise for Tom, Karen takes the opposite approach as she is very critical of him being their unofficial leader. Everyone is like, oh, oh Tom, oh Tom, yes Tom. But the women just don't, won't even throw a stick in the fire with a Tom, Tom. Can I throw a stick in the fire, Tom? When Jeff Probst and production arrives to get a tour of the bathroom that Karor built, Tom excels at leading the tour to the point that Probst even compliments him on this. He really does make it light and fun. The tour was terrific. It was taking them through our thought process. Tom, you're a great tour guide. He is, he is. As it turns out, Karor wins the bathroom building contest, which causes such joy and excitement that Tom does a cartwheel to celebrate. Yeah. The immunity challenge is a sumo style competition where competitors need to use a bag to shove the other person off of an elevated platform. Tom competes against Bobby John both times and despite Bobby John's raw energy and power and frankly his youthfulness, Tom wins and helps secure his tribe their fourth win in a row. Episode 5 has us learning that Greg and Jen are in a flirt mance, and considering how Boston Rob and Amber just ran this game two seasons ago being in a similar type of relationship, this has everyone on high alert. I mean, Jennifer had her hand on Greg's stomach, rubbing on it. I mean, it's very obvious. They gotta think we're stupid if we can't tell that they're together. For the first time all game, we hear Tom speak negatively of someone, and don't get used to this, this is very rare, as he paints Willard to be lazy, since Willard didn't catch Tom's hints to tend to the fire last night. You're in charge! Willard! You're in charge of the fire, unless you wake somebody up. To, to make matters worse, I had to climb over Willard sleeping in the hammock uh, each time I had to get up and tend the fire, you know? I mean, because of his age, he can't contribute a lot. But he can come out here and put another log on the fire. Imagine putting up with that in the real world. I mean, it's oh, just God. like, you know. You have to bite your tongue here and just keep playing the game. At the reward challenge, we get a bomb dropped on us by Jeff Probst. As it turns out... Win or lose, both tribes are going to tribal council tonight. Both tribes will vote one tribe member out. That's right. Both tribes are going to tribal council no matter what. Now, Karor does end up winning the beast to reward. And back at camp, Tom paints Willard as a potential challenge beast when it comes to the individual game, which is a, a very laughable thought. And once it gets to all puzzles and he starts kicking off, and he ends up in the final two instead of one of us. 
I can't live with that. Greg then says the actual truth, the thing that Tom kind of indicated earlier in this episode, that Willard is dragging the team down and everyone agrees to vote him out. He's out, right? He's out. Is that Willard then? Right. As far as the team goes, Will's been dragging the most. He's, he's been dragging and he's a thinker, dude, you know? Then something very peculiar happens. Do you remember earlier when we learned that Tom, Ian, Katie, Greg, and Jen are the majority lines of Karor? Well, Greg has a conversation with Kobe where it seems like he is keeping his options open about him and Jen flipping on Tom and Ian. Tom and Ian are really just strong, you know? And that, that, that bond's just too tight and that is something sneaky, you know? Right. Jen and I feel like we're on the outside of that alliance. Him and Jennifer want to make a secret alliance to the top four with me and Janu. And we could start picking off who I perceive to be the bigger strengths in Tom and Ian. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks Katie who the leader of Karor is, and Katie says, well, when it comes to catching food, that's Ian. But when it comes to leading us for challenges, it's clearly Tom. Katie, who's leading this tribe right now? Depends how you want to define leader. At challenges, Tom definitely is a leader. Greg then starts defining who is paired up with who on Karor as he describes Tom and Ian like a father and son. You definitely see that. Um, Tom and Ian spend a lot of time together. You know, it's like a father-son relationship. I'm the father. Yeah. <laughs> and I would agree with Greg, by the way. It is time to vote, and Willard is predictably voted out 8 to 1. Willard, the spoken. Episode 6 is a quiet one for Tom as Karor loses reward, and back at camp it is shown that Janu has been feeling really down and out. Tom does his best to give her a pep talk and empathizes with her, which is something we have seen him doing with almost everyone all game. Um, just, I don't want to get out of bed either. It's, uh, it's a bad place to be, but let today be a bad day. It's so hot. It is hot. It is it's very so hot. deep heated. So you've, you've already passed your, your, your worst fear of going home early. You're going to make the merge. I think you're going to be on the jury, and uh, if most of us aren't careful, we're going to be the jury voting on you. Karor then goes on to win immunity again. Poor Oolong. Episode 7 begins, and Tom is working out, which uh, does not go unnoticed. Tom's doing crunches. I was going to say, do you see Tom doing crunches? Ian then brings in the mother load, a massive clam with a ton of meat, a real victory for Karor and he feels like a king. Everyone is of course excited, but we then cut to Tom excitedly shouting because what do you know, he chopped a shark in half with a machete. I did you get it? I hit it with the machete, cut it in half. Look at that. How's that for a shot? <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm talking about! We then hear from Tom an assessment of himself where he thinks he just now revealed himself as a strong player, like now in episode 7, which is uh, a day late and a dollar short, as everyone already knew this Tom. The cat's out of the bag that I'm a, a strong player and I'm fit and I'm, I'm not the old guy in the tribe. The reward challenge has Karor making an SOS signal and since they can only have three people do it, Tom is one of the five that are sitting out, but he hates this as he would rather be helping them than observing. It's nerve wracking. I'm just sitting here like a cat on a hot tin roof. You just want to be a part of this thing and uh, you just want to help. <sighs> There's a lot on the line, there's nothing you can do but be an observer, and uh, I don't like the position. Karor ultimately does win reward, and Tom notices how close Greg and Jen's bond has become since he suspects that if one of them gets voted off too early, the other might flip. What is going to happen when all of a sudden we have to tell Greg or Jen that the other one may be getting voted off that night? Uh, you're bringing in a whole different volatile emotion that is separate from this game. At the immunity challenge, Oolong is proud of themselves for catching a hand-sized fish, and this is, of course, laughable in comparison to Tom's story of him killing and catching a shark. Any luck with fishing? <laughs> We're doing okay. Um, doing yeah, okay. the Beastmaster came out, and Tom battled a shark, and he killed it with a machete. Karor wins immunity again, whittling Oolong down to only two members remaining. Episode 8 has a seeing that these rats are really getting out of control as they don't fear Karor at all, and it seems like camp is being made into a mess due to the laziness from many of its members. The rats, they're going crazy today. I don't know if, uh, if we've gotten sloppy with food or we're cutting the coconuts too close to the camp or... I just think it's that the rats have got comfortable with us and realized that we're not a threat to them. At the reward challenge, Tom and Ian face off against Stephanie and Bobby John to eat partially formed baby birds. It looks gross. When Tom and Stephanie face off, she tries to convince herself that what she's eating is, is just eggs. That way she can actually get it down. And Tom takes this opportunity to make a joke and try to psych her out by saying he thinks he heard a chirp out of his bird. Thinking it all about what you're eating, Steph? Eggs. Eggs. It's just eggs. I had a chirp out of that one. Mm. 
Karor and Oolong tied up, so it comes down to a showdown of Tom versus Bobby John. Whoever can eat their five baby birds first wins. And what happens? Tom, very oh. close. Oh. Tom's got it. Oh. Oh. Part of winning that reward means Karor gets a 50 gallon source of fresh water. Tom says we should use it as clean drinking water, obviously, but Jen wants to shower. He has the right thought and is correct on paper, but he does strong arm this decision from Jen, which really annoys her. But there were people within the tribe who actually thought that the first fresh water that we've seen in 19 days should actually be used for shower purposes. Tom is the one who spoke up. Well, I think we need to uh, conserve, you know, and, and use that water for drinking. And it's 55 gallons of water. I mean, come on, you can't let us use like a gallon or two. We then learn that no one, not even Greg and Jen, know about his secret deal with Stephanie aside from Ian and Katie. So Tom is banking on her making the merge and helping out his game. Katie and Ian and I hooked up on day two and said, let's see how far we could take this. And Stephanie also was part of that group, except for myself, Ian and Katie, nobody even knows that there is a relationship that Stephanie would be the wolf in the sheep's clothing that they wouldn't even see coming. At the immunity challenge, this may come as a shocker, but Karor wins, who saw that one coming, completely sweeping Oolong and now making them have only one member remaining. Karor is right. Yeah. Karor wins immunity again. Yeah. Because there are only two of you, there'll be no vote. There will be an individual immunity challenge. Loser goes home. Wow. Episode 9 begins, and in a little bit of a pleasant surprise, Stephanie, the girl who jumped out of the boat, and the last member of Oolong arrives at the Karor camp to join them. It isn't officially a merge, but the individual game has now finally begun. I was so quick to give up that damn Oolong buff, and it's not anything against Oolong, it's just I'm so done with that. This is a new chapter in my life, I feel like. I'm ready to start winning with Karor. Since the game is now individual, everyone gets to celebrate and they do just that by getting to have local Palauan men come to their canch and teach them how to fish these waters. However, the Palauans say, hey, we're gonna need bait to do this fishing, so we need a couple people to hang back and catch bait for us. Kobe volunteers himself and Ian, but Tom wants Ian to go out fishing with him. Why not? Ian goes out fishing all the time. It only makes sense. This causes Kobe to get very upset, which results in him pouting and walking off and directing all of his taste towards Tom. I can show him, Tom. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of the bait thing. Yeah. Tom, shut up. I'm bait man, you're fish man. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I can do it myself. Good luck, you guys. Yeah, Tom. The Palauans then bust out the alcohol, and Tom goes at it a little too hard as he gets drunk pretty easily, and it is a pretty fun moment. Obviously, we need new, we need new legs. What do you have first? New legs. Oh. Alright? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Sit, go sit down on the on the hut. Alright, I'm good. 21 days without food, couple of shots of rum. It was lights out for Tom. So uh today I'm ready to go, you know. Tom loves this experience of the Palauan men visiting, but this is in stark contrast to Kobe, who is utterly annoyed by Tom and how he is treating all of this. Alright, if you pass by this island in the next few days, uh, stop by and see if we're doing okay, alright? Okay. Today when the two Palauans were leaving. Tom would not stop kissing their butt and just laughing at everything they said. And he has this fake laugh he brings out. And he would say, if you're ever around our camp again. <laughs> Kobe then takes matters into his own hands and goes off to talk with Stephanie to tell her everything he knows. For all intents and purposes, he is pretty much dead on with his information, which does expose Tom's game and makes him look like he may not be as close to Stephanie as she would like to think. So here's the main alliance. Ian, Tom, Katie, Jennifer, Greg. And Janu won't just quit now, especially, right? She's no. like, they're gonna vote me off. Listen, I don't quit. know if it's you or Janu. The team's mentality, of course, was to pick whoever it was to come over all. Who from Karor? And keep it all Karor. But despite this very valuable information that she learns that she probably should keep to herself, she immediately dumps it all to Jen, Katie, and Tom. And he does his best work to smooth things out with her and let her know that she is still valued and still considered to be a member of the alliance she made on day one. You're not the dead man walking here. There's okay, other yeah. people who are leaving before you. They'll Myself, be back here. Ian, and Katie are going to look out for the you. Way? They're going to look oh out for you. Let's fall down the road as we can. The immunity challenge is a simple one. Stand on a perch for as long as possible while resisting the temptation to jump for food. One after another, people drop for donuts, cookies, and pizza, leaving Tom as the last one standing. You think you could stay overnight? I could stay. Yeah. You could? I'm a stubborn Irishman. Pizza! Steph is in! Karen's in! Tom! 
wins the first individual immunity. At Tribal Council, Kobe is voted out seven to one to one. Kobe, the tribe has spoken. Episode 10 has an intense immunity challenge. Stay under a grate for as long as you can while the tide rises on you, making it harder and harder to breathe. It looks a lot easier than it actually is. I imagine this is a massive mental game. Whoever drops out first has to live alone on an island for a night, and Janu ends up being the one who drops out first. And we see pretty much everyone except for Stephanie laugh at her, which uh, Jeff Probst does not like. Doesn't seem like a lot of love loss with these guys. They don't seem too concerned about you tonight. Not yeah. You know what? I'm sitting here asking her if she knows how to make fire and you guys are making jokes like you're an open mic you tell me what am i supposed to think however it comes down to tom and ian and uh who wins it all that's it tom wins immunity back at camp greg is done with stephanie and he wants her gone next he views her as way too big of a threat if she reaches the end of this game uh her story is going to be unbeatable tom views being aligned with him and jen as more valuable than his lines with stephanie so he agrees that she will go next even though it isn't really what he wants to do so you can just see it all coming together stephanie conquers oolong then comes in and conquers karor and we want to all prevent that from happening jen and greg who have since joined ian katie and i and have become five are adamant that stephanie goes home so it's, it's not where my heart is but anything can happen at tribal council the writing is on the wall and stephanie knows it we know it. The results seem inevitable. We even hear from Tom and Greg at Tribal Council making this perfectly obvious. Stephanie's going home. People are basing their votes on how it positions them in the game. And eliminating competition is part of this game. That is until Janu pulls the rug from underneath all of our feet. Why keep you? No reason. They can get rid of me. You are on your own, quitting this game. Yes, Jeff, I will lay down my torch this evening. Wow, and uh, she even goes through with it too. It's not just talk, and actually saves Stephanie, putting a real wrench into everyone's plans. Episode 11 comes with Tom doing full on damage control. He has to remain cool and somehow makes Stephanie feel good, despite the fact that she was definitely getting voted out. If Janu hadn't quit, of course. Back at camp, he tries to convince her that Janu was getting voted out. It definitely wasn't you. <laughs> would have gone the same way she would have been going home you after think? what happened I after that so. yes. no, really? yeah. Yeah. he then makes a gesture of goodwill and presents her with his immunity necklace claiming that she clearly earned it i have no idea if this actually works but her initial reaction seems to be flattered my immunity became a moot point tonight since it wasn't used but somebody did earn their own Aww. immunity Later on, Tom reveals where he thinks he stands in the pecking order as he says he thinks he is gone right after Stephanie, which then leads to one of the most baffling pitches in the first 10 seasons of Survivor as Tom talks to the rest of the core and says, hey guys, please don't vote me out for being a threat. I only won challenges to help the tribe and uh, Tom would be making a solid pitch if it was the pre-merge, except here we are at the final seven and Tom is on the heels of having just one back-to-back -back individual immunity challenge. Um, yeah, he's a big threat. I'm pleading for my life before we even get to that stage of the game but my strength in the challenge is it's part of what got us to this point right. don't penalize it because i didn't hide it right. and nobody has won the million dollars who's been a strong winner of any of those rewards it's always always somebody sense. else it Gosh, was a the, plea the fact that he's winning it totally, totally makes him a target yeah totally. and he's like don't make it no one's ever won because there's, they won there's, there's a reason why there's no one's ever won it is now time for the survivor auction and as a food item after food item goes up for bidding and Tom passes, he holds onto his money tight until the letters from home are busted out and finally, it's something that he wants. 220 to Tom. Go on once, twice. Sold to Tom, letter from home. <laughs> Got his hand. Back at camp, Ian is bathing, with a little assistance from Greg, mind you. The girls find this funny since they say uh, he could have asked us to help him, and we would have. Ian then tries to rope in Tom for some cleaning, and Tom is like, uh, no way. Hey, can you check my neck and just make sure there's no like really big brown spots back there? No, there are. I'm not going to clean a few, but there's, uh, you look nice and clean. Good. The question is looming. Should Stephanie still be target number one? Tom reveals that he believes by keeping his five together, he thinks it'll be safe for just a little bit longer than if he saves Stephanie. He then ropes 
Bruce and Karen and does something pretty much no one else has been able to do all game, especially Katie, and that is to rope her in and help him, as Karen has pretty much been a lone wolf most of the game. Tom is my in right now. And Tom said to me, Karen, I'm going to watch you as long as I can. He said, I want you to go as far as you can. At the immunity challenge, Tom blows it hard and actually hands Ian the win. Thankfully, Stephanie is the target and she didn't win immunity and that's kind of what counts. Back at camp, Katie tries to make a big move and flip the women on the men since they do have a four to three advantage. Karen listens to her and immediately runs back to Tom to tell him everything. We have four and they have three. I hate to do it, but I knew that I'd have to jump ship at some point. I just didn't know when it would be. You know, I love Tom. Yeah. I'll be, so I will cry when I have to write his name down. Well, that was Karen just letting me know that the girls are talking about eliminating some of the guys and that uh, my name popped up. Ian then confronts Katie about her attempt to make this move and Katie is pretty annoyed at Karen for ruining everything. At Tribal Council, Stephanie is voted out six to one. Steph, Travis has spoken. Yeah. With Oolong now completely decimated, it is only Karor who stands in Tom's way. Can he do it? Episode 12 has a reward challenge that really reveals who is aligned with who, which would matter if everyone wasn't already painfully aware of where everyone else already stood. However, a funny moment occurs when Greg promises Katie to not drop her lantern, so he asks Jen permission to drop hers instead. Is that horrible if I hit you, Jen? Did you just ask permission? Yes, you did. Wow. Is it okay, dear? What a freak, man. However, during the same challenge, Katie knocks Ian out of the game so she can go on the yacht reward, and this is a big deal to him since they have been very close all game and they kind of promised each other to go on the next reward together. Back at camp, he realizes that if she is willing to cut him for a night on a yacht, then she's willing to cut him for a million dollars, which is absolutely true based on what we just saw her trying to do in the last episode. We then cut to them on the yacht where she confirms this yet again. Katie chose to throw me into the water rather than Greg. And I said, wow, that's interesting. If Katie's willing to sell me out for a night on a yacht, there's no way she's gonna hold on to me for a million dollars. You know, the only person that's really gonna do sneaky stuff is me, because I'm jumping. Right, I'm Tom and Ian, to you guys. Him and Tom then concoct a plan to play dumb and act like Karen is still going next when actually it's gonna be Greg. Tom tells Karen to put on her best acting performance and she does just that. You've been acting the last two days like you're about to be sent home. Uh -huh. Continue to act that way. Okay. Do not say, don't be word. chipper, be down and okay. down. Okay. okay. Ian wins immunity in a head-to-head -head duel with Tom shooting a gun and back at camp, Tom jokes that it is a good thing he became a fireman and not a cop. That dawn gun, man, that is my Achilles heel. It's very fortunate I became a fireman rather than a cop because it would just be dangerous for everybody. Greg then approaches Tom and Ian and says, oh man, tonight is going to be so boring since we are predictably voting out Karen and Ian is like, oh yeah, it's going to be super interesting, which is not what Greg was expecting to hear. So Tom slips in real quick and saves Ian's butt. So I should be uneventful currently? I think so. I think it'll be interesting how the whole thing plays out. Interesting or? It's always interesting. Ian tells Katie at the very last minute before tribal that Greg is going next and him and Tom are willing to go to rocks to make this happen. This leaves her with no time to scramble, which is strategically good as Greg is then voted out four to two. Greg, Travis spoken. Episode 13 has some big strategic moves attempted to be made as Jen scrambles to try and get Ian to flip on Tom, but Ian is very non-committal to this whole idea, showing his loyalty to his alliance with Tom. Tom then continues to work on Karen and make sure that she knows that a female alliance can't happen. It won't make her safe. It wouldn't make sense for her game. Those other women will not help her. She seemingly agrees with him on all this, even though it's wrong. I know what's going to happen today. I know. Katie's I know. Gonna She's going to say the you. three women have to go. Three women together. go together, get rid of the guys, and yep. if you're solid, I'm solid I know you're not going to go with it because right. it's not a good deal. It's not it's, a good deal. Uh, Before the reward challenge, Tom and Ian talk to each other and decide that if one of them wins, they have to take a girl with them on the reward so all three girls don't have time alone to talk to each other and, you know, gang up. The smart decision. If one of us gets to choose one other person, we can't choose each other on this one. We've got to take one of the girls out of the mix so that they're not going to uh, be able to talk to each other. At the reward challenge, a Chevrolet Corvette is on the line, and what do you know? Ian wins it. Jeff then asks him, hey, who do you want to take on the reward with you? And? I made a deal if there was a car involved that I would take Tom. I told Katie yesterday that I'd take her, but I, I shook hands on it with him. I made a promise to him. 
So I can't, I can't break that. As you may have surmised, the women all talk to each other at camp because they're all together and there are no men around, with Katie and Karen revealing information that they didn't know to each other. So when Tom and Ian arrive back from the reward, Karen confronts them both and forces Ian to say, hey, who's your final three? Is it with me or is it with Katie? Is it you, me, Tom, or is it you, me, Katie? It's gonna be you, me, uh, you, me, and Tom. That's the deal. So it could have been you, it could have been Katie. We're all playing the game. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I mean, I can't give you an answer right now. And Ian just waves and said, well, I can't promise and I can't do this. And I just said, oh my God. Katie feels scorned and her and Ian work things out in a very emotional conversation where uh, she kind of emotionally manipulates him. However, Tom takes the opposite approach of Ian and tries threatening Katie into not flipping. And this seems to uh, not work at all. Ian is definitely the one saving the day here, though he is also the one who screwed it up. So one of us goes home, the other one's still here. If that next one's physical, and the guy who's left wins it, then it's gonna be you. And that'll be the payback for flipping. Tom sucks today, he's being mean. He's like threatening and it's like cold. I don't like it. At the immunity challenge, Tom wins, securing himself a spot in the final four. Tom has it right! Yes. Tom wins immunity! At Tribal Council, the women are just roasting Ian. Karen then tries to do the same thing to Tom, except he lies and successfully turns it around on her instead, and you just see the jury loving all of this. What happened when we got back to the beach now, Karen has informed me that Katie and Greg have decided I'm the next to go. <gasps> so they said it's oh her my and gosh. then me. Tom, you no. are such a liar. No. Now the basis that Tom is lying here is that we didn't see what he is saying happen on the show and why wouldn't they show it to us unless it didn't happen and they're wanting us to see Tom's devious side. Anyways, Karen is voted out four to one. Karen, Travis spoken. It's time for to go. It is finale time, Tom versus Ian, versus Katie, versus Jen. Will Tom be able to navigate these remaining days where the target is still firmly on his back? He has been a big target all game and despite that has yet to receive a vote so far. Anyways, the final four receive their finale breakfast and Tom calls this an attaboy. There have been no gimmies in this game. You fight for what you get. So to just get something today for nothing, just for making final four, it was just a uh, like an attaboy. That's what we call it in the firehouse, you know, you got an attaboy. It's finally happening. Not only is Tom the target for Katie and Jen, but Ian is turning as well. I have a big responsibility today at this immunity challenge to beat the crap out of Tom. This is the, uh, the moment that I've been waiting for the entire game. So I win the challenge, Tom goes home. I don't win the challenge, Tom's all of a sudden my best friend again. Now Tom doesn't know Ian is flipping yet, but the immunity challenge is truly do or die for him as he does pull off the win against Ian and you can just see how visibly annoyed the women are about this. Tom raises his flag. Jen then talks to Tom and he says, sorry, you have to go tonight. I can't flip on my friend Ian. Jen does seem to genuinely appreciate this, which can only help him when she is on the jury. In spite of how tempting it is to cut you loose and let you fly tonight, um, <laughs> I can't do it. Things are good with us as, as far as within the game and outside the game. Um, Absolutely. Okay, Jen. Absolutely, thank you. Ian then makes an even bigger flub than that time he did it with Greg, except this one is especially killer to him in his game as he says, hey Tom, it's a good thing that you want immunity, because if I had won it, I would have had a tough decision to make tonight. This is of course implying that uh, he was considering voting Tom out and he's saying it to his face. If I would have won immunity today, it'd have been a really difficult decision for me <laughs> to Tom, so I'm glad that I didn't have to make it. I told them that if I won immunity today that I was gonna vote you up. But uh, Tom, like, Okay. Now that's all Tom needs to hear as at Tribal Council, Ian tries to change the narrative in front of the jury and Tom ain't having it. Tom and I went so far as to make this gentleman's agreement that said we would try to take each other to the final three. Did at any point you go to your strongest ally in day two and say, listen, just want to give you a heads up. This is what's being talked about. I'm playing into it. I'll keep you informed. Absolutely. So Absolutely. why is this a surprise to you, Tom, if Ian told you all this? He didn't tell me that, and he just actually made a third strike against himself. It is then time to vote, as Tom votes for Ian, which creates a 2-2 tie between him and Jen, and on the revote, nothing changes, and Ian has to face off in a fire-making duel with Jen, and... And there it is. 
Ian stays in this game. Back at camp, Tom and Katie are going full force on Ian, trying to make him confess to lying. Now, this is rich coming from Katie since she was part of the scheme to backstab Tom with Ian, but Tom is clearly hurt and Ian feels quite guilty about all of this. What do you, Tell what me what do you want to hear from Which me? is that you weren't going with me to the final three to duke it out like men. That is not the truth. You didn't get the chance. You had the immunity necklace, I'm home taking a shower right now. It's just weaselly to, to still be saying that, oh, I wasn't gonna do it, I wasn't gonna do it. You slipped tonight and you blew it. I didn't come out here to play the villain. I didn't come out here to like be this, like be the, the backstabber. It's time for the final immunity challenge. Stand on a buoy as long as possible. Whoever is left standing wins. About five hours into the challenge, yes, five hours, Katie drops out and it is down to just Tom and Ian. These two have been physically dominating these immunity challenges all game and it is only fitting that they are left. Tom then offers Ian a deal and Ian offers him a counter offer in return. If I beat you at this event, I'm taking Katie to the final. You step off that perch, I'm taking you. Okay, I won't step off the perch. I'll tell you what, you jump first, we have a deal. <laughs> After almost 12 hours, yes, right under 12 hours, Ian makes a decision to ease his conscience and decides to make a game changing decision as what matters to him is not the million dollars. Okay, I have a solution. I'll, uh, I'll go down and take Katie, and I'll give up the million um, to, to get back your, your guys' friendship. Would it be successful? Would he be accomplishing what he's trying to do? Without a doubt. Ian would have my friendship after this game anyway, but he wins my respect back. He and Tom swim back to the platform and Tom cracks a joke and they hug. I was about to fall off too, I'm surprised you did that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna vote out my buddy Ian, I respect him. Ian. You are the 16th person voted out of this game. Back at camp, Katie paints Tom as the scary beast that you don't see coming. There's this scary beast in there inside Tom. He's threatening, he's intimidating. I once again will be candid and, and let the jury know, you know, what Tom has been up to and, and what kind of steps that he took to keep himself in the game. Just like pretty much all game, Tom doesn't have a bad word to say about Katie though and says this has truly been the experience of a lifetime and he enjoyed every second of it. You know, it's bittersweet. It's been tough yet, but it's been the experience of a lifetime and uh, yeah, I think we're going to take this place apart with a little lump in our throat. It is time, final tribal council. While to us as an audience, it seems like a no brainer that Tom should win, upsets have happened before. The storytelling of a season doesn't always tell us everything we need to know. So can Tom pull it off? Well, his opening speech has him humbling himself and saying he's no more worthy to be here than anyone else. He then leans into how he was a hard worker, how he didn't talk bad about anyone. And it really just is a feel good opener from him from top to bottom. It's an honor to be sitting in front of what has been our tribe and our family for uh, last couple of weeks it's been an honor and this is humbling and I cherish you people for going through this experience with me. Kobe is the first juror and he takes his chance to just lay it in to Tom and Katie. Uh, it almost seems like he doesn't like either of them, but he does tell Tom, hey, you played a dirty game. So what I want from you tonight is for you to just be honest. The honest one here will get my vote. Greg is the second juror and he asks Tom, why did you backstab me? Just tell me the truth. Tom tries to pass this off as Ian's idea and pretty much plays a beautiful game of acting dumb to appease to Greg. And uh, let me tell you, it feels a little bit like uh, uh, Chris Doherty is being channeled here. When I voted you out, I did think that you had threatened me. I believed it. I apologize for that. I was taken in because I didn't think I had any reason to doubt Ian. Regrets? Totally. I, I was taken in. Stephanie is the third juror and she wants to know with specific details why she was voted out. Tom does a good job explaining how he valued his alliance with Greg and Jen more than his alliance with Stephanie and uh, she seems satisfied. For me to lose my alliance and still not save you from uh, from getting voted off just didn't make any sense within this game. Tom then expertly avoids a bus that Katie tries throwing him under when she talks to Stephanie. This is something he has been doing all game. Tom actually came to me before you, you came and said we need to take out Stephanie. You were an ace in the hole that was the last person I wanted to see voted off. 
I, there's no sense to that at all. Janu is the fourth juror and she wants to know how hard was it for Tom to compromise his integrity in this game? He says that everyone kind of sets their own line for integrity and they have to decide whether or not they're going to cross it in the game and he says he never actually did that. I play the game as well as I can. I played it with as much honor as I can. I mean, you cannot play Survivor and not mislead, misdirect. Karen is the fifth juror and she asked Tom, what was I to you in this game? Now this is classic Karen. She's very confrontational with everyone. She then gets argumentative with him and uh, he shuts her up in a way I never would have thought of doing myself. I'll tell applaud. you what, it's I won't tough. even answer that question. I'm gonna let you find that for yourself in your heart, okay? Okay, fair enough. Jen is the sixth juror and she says she doesn't feel like Tom respected her or her game when she was playing. Tom admits to this and says, you're right. Pretty much all game, I didn't respect you or your game. But he turns it around by saying, you know what? She did show him something at the very end when Greg was voted out. And at that point, he finally understood and respected her gameplay. My respect for your game, I'll agree, came late. Your whole game was that you hid your game. I had no game to see. Ian is the final juror and he asks each of them why they shouldn't win the million dollars. Tom says that he shouldn't win because the experience of being out here for 39 days more than made up for everything else. And even if this is true, it feels disingenuous. You shouldn't give me a million dollars, I think because I've already had my payday. The experience of being here with you guys has been genuine. For his closing speech, he claims that everyone met the real Tom. He wasn't putting on a front or hiding things from them. He played just as straightforward as he could and he hopes he will be judged and how he played and he states that he holds no ill will towards any of them no matter how they vote. Yeah, I'm willing to be judged on how I played the game, how I treated you, and however you vote. There are no hard feelings from this end and I have loved these days. It is overall a very solid final tribal council and he really leans into the things that he needed to by answering people's questions with what they wanted to hear from him and never talking trash about anyone including Katie which is not what Katie did at all. In fact this clip of her talking to Janu about sums up her final tribal council. I don't expect your vote Janu so I don't know that I need to do that to give you positive and negative. I mean I can do that if you need me to but I don't expect your vote. We then only get to see two people vote. The first is Janu, who states she is voting for Tom since he picked her on day one to be on Karor. And the second is Kobe, who continues with his hate train of Tom. I asked for honesty tonight, and I got it. But it wasn't from you, Tom. The votes are revealed, and... The winner of Survivor <laughs> Tom completely dominated Palau and all the while only being eligible to be voted off three times. By the time people even wanted to do that, it was far too late. Even against Ian at the end, I still think Tom wins, but good on him for tricking Ian into losing on purpose during the epic 12 hour challenge to make sure he crushes Katie. So believe it or not, Tom does play again, 10 seasons later on Survivor Heroes versus Villains. And if you want to pick what videos I make, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It's an optional way to support this content and grants you access to see everything up to six months early. Link in the description. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. The epic returning season is finally upon us. Heroes versus Villains. Survivor hasn't had a full on returning season since All Stars when egos clashed and a dark miserable story took place with the lone shining light of that season being Rob and Amber's relationship. But this time around, it will be different. This season is themed in such a way that it is going to cause heads to butt and rivalries to take place. Instead of the logo saying the bog standard outwit, outplay and outlast, it says return, revenge, redemption. Tom is on the Heroes Tribe with James, Colby, JT, Rupert, Sugar, Amanda, Candice Sari and Stephanie LaGrosa from Palau. While this is Tom's second time playing, this is Stephanie's third. She actually played her second time on season 11 where she finished in second place. Now, while some people have inspiring first confessionals about how they're excited to be playing on this season, Tom says, I'm not in the shape I was last time, but I still think that I could hang in there as tough as any guy next to me. Yeah, I don't feel inspired like I did when he talked in Palau, but maybe he's just setting a really low bar here. We then see the heroes arrive on the beach and then the villains fall suit, all the while kicking sand into their faces. Stephanie is annoyed. And I gotta say, how some of these players are considered heroes is beyond me, but as Boston Rob states, I'm a villain. <laughs> Well, it's all in perspective, I guess. It's how you see it. Tom says this time around, expect heroes to play like villains and vice versa. Well, well, well. Is that what Tom intends to do? 
Interesting. I would be very interested in Tom turning heel on us. We then have our first reward challenge where both tribes fight over a bag buried in the sand and Stephanie pops her shoulder out just like that. But like the boss that she is, she pops it right back in just like that. Wow. When Tom competes, he faces off against the only completely unknown player on the cast to the rest of them, Russell Hans. Russell came from season 19, which filmed like weeks prior to the season starting, so no one knows who he is. But we quickly learn that he is really a villain because he fights very dirty, and all Propes can muster up is telling him to play fair. Yeah, thanks Propes. Tell that to Tom's injuries after this. The heroes do ultimately win, and upon arriving at camp, there are chickens on the beach. Well, well, well. I thought I heard some clucking and went around, looked in the bush, and I'd see some movement out of the corner of my eye. And here comes a rooster, three hens walking right out. Hey. Go around the back, guys, and, and draw them out towards us. Everybody who's free should just surround them. Three. Uh, yeah. 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 We don't win a chicken dinner. We don't win a chicken dinner. Watching these guys working together, I'm ecstatic. Coming back into Survivor, I know the first five days are the hardest time. I haven't hit that wall yet. Maybe in our tribe, we won't. I mean, shoot, we found chicken. We're gonna be out of the elements. It's good to be a hero. The heroes are starting off strong, though I am personally suspicious by the large presence of chickens in this camp area. We then see later how Colby doesn't know anyone past season eight, AKA the last season he played on, and Candace says keep an eye out for duos like Tom and Stephanie. They're dangerous, which leads us to Tom and Steph reuniting. So how you doing, my friend? Welcome to Samoa. <laughs> It's good to be here with you again. Yeah, that's great. My closest ally is Stephanie. We played well together in our season in Palau, and uh, I was thrilled to see her back here on this beach in my tribe. I'm gonna try to work with Stephanie as far as we can, but she might not be my smartest end player. If I were to get that far in the game and were to face a jury, I want somebody else who won the million dollars sitting next to me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, seeing you right away, I will, you know, you want to make some kind of an oath, whatever. I, you and I need each other at the finals because we both won the money. They have to choose one. If else. anyone goes, if either one of us, no matter how good a game we play, goes up against someone who didn't win, we lose. It's a good plan. All right. If there's anything I learned about JT and Token Chains, it's that he's very trustworthy. The heroes then lose immunity, bad. They look very inept, and for some reason they had four people working on the puzzle, including Rupert. Rupert can't do puzzles. That night, Sugar is feeling quite lonely, so she tries cuddling with the cute men, in particular Colby, who very much does not want this and is annoyed. In fact, Sugar seems to not be well liked by most everyone on the cast, and Tom says, Voting someone out of this game is similar to picking which chicken you kill for dinner. Are they producing for us? If not, dinner time. Colby then talks to Tom and says, I'm thinking that you got a follower and you got one of the uh, smartest strategic players in the game. But why are we taking out the follower instead of strategic player? Sari has run this game a few times. I really believe that when you identify a threat, you take them out as soon as possible. You don't wait. People did that on my season and they waited too long and then they didn't get the opportunity to get rid of me. So uh, I don't want to have those regrets that those people had. Dari is just a brilliant strategist in the game. She's proven that. So I'm just a little nervous to give her a bye tonight. We then hear from Sari that she wants Tom or Steph gone. Great. At Tribal Council, Tom says, all this talk of previous relationships in this game, it's hogwash. It doesn't matter. Let's just wipe the slate clean and move along. Of course, everything Tom is saying is a lie. They do matter, and he just wants everyone to ignore that. So everyone votes, and Sugar is gone nine to one. Sugar, sure. the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Episode two has the hero saying, okay, this next challenge needs to have one person take the lead so we aren't a mess like last time. And since this puzzle is from Token Chains and JT won this puzzle on his season, they let him take the lead. And at the immunity challenge, this doesn't go well at all. Everyone pops in with their opinions, including Stephanie, and they lose. James is absolutely livid and he just yells at everyone, which is Tom saying, One voice, that's all I ask, one damn voice individual to shut up and listen to the guy who's done the challenge because I ain't never lost this much in my life. That panic scream and anguish cry of James when he got back to the hut. All right, great. You've been a winner your whole life. I doubt it. I'd love to tell him what a winner is and what a loser and where he fits into that, that equation. And once again, 
that I've got to hold my tongue and not respond to that, that kills me out here. We then witness James go on a war path against Stephanie where he talks about how she was the only one who survived Oolong and therefore is cursed. I mean, that was like 10 seasons ago, James, and Stephanie played on our season between these two where she won immunity multiple times, including an individual win. But that's not the narrative James is painting. He's painting that Stephanie is a curse to their tribe. And as it turns out, the tribe is divided with Tom, Colby, and Stephanie on the outs. JT has turned. Tom tries to swing Candace and Sari to their side by saying, hey, once Steph is gone, one of you are going next, either Sari or Candace. Candace then considers the idea and at Tribal Council, James straight up bullies Stephanie, but Tom and Colby stand up for her. So they all go to vote and... Steph, the tribe has spoken. Some advice. Next time y'all lose a challenge, a little less cursing off your tribe might help. Keep your mouth shut. Oh, come on. Episode 3 has JT apologizing to Tom for backstabbing him, and he still wants to work with him. Tom says, mm, we shall see if JT is being truthful or not, but then their chickens escape, but thankfully, Tom catches them. So we go to the immunity challenge, where it's all about brute force. Robber's ready. Go. Episode 4 sees the villains win reward and back at camp the heroes decide to make some coffee with the beans they won in the prior episode and what do you know, there's a piece of paper inside. It says, there's a hidden immunity idol somewhere in your camp. Go. Everyone dashes around looking for it until... Well, nobody was looking. I found the immunity idol, dropped it into my sock. Tom, he was acting a little funny and when I came up on him I saw him put something into his sock and then he went behind a tree so I knew he had it. Oh, oh shit. Tom is not at all slick and Amanda caught on immediately. Within minutes, everyone at camp knows that Tom found it, but he just denies, denies, denies. At the immunity challenge, they lose by mere seconds. It's rough. And back at Camp Suri is actively working to split up Tom and Colby. JT tells Tom about this and he says, why don't we just vote out Suri instead? So they go to tribal and... I'll read the votes. Jeff. Thank you. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Tom will not count. First vote, Tom does not count. Tom does not count. Tom does not count. Colby, that's one vote Colby. Colby, Suri, Suri. Fourth person voted out a survivor, heroes versus villains. Suri. Suri, the tribe has spoken. Wow, Suri is gone and the idle play saved Tom's hide because on a revote, he was gonna go. Back at camp, JT lies to his old alliance about what happened and do you remember back in episode one when Tom said heroes may play like villains? That's JT, he's gone full villain. Never go full villain. Now this next moment I'm gonna show you is the key turning point in Tom's story. This will define the season. With just a little taste of chocolate. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 wow. Colby, you have a look on your face like this is annoying or somehow insulting. I handed you the plate and you were like, I don't want this. I'm not annoyed with you. I'm ready to get to the challenge. Free offer of chocolate. I'm just curious. It. Let's go. I got the message, brother. We'll go when I'm ready. Heroes, you're sitting out one person. It has to be a man. No, I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Colby gonna sit this one out for the heroes. Wonderful, Colby, wonderful. Obviously, it doesn't change anything. I just thought it was funny. On a truthful note, James hurts himself during this challenge and it is bad. The villains end up winning and Jeff says heroes go back to camp while Medical looks at James. 
Tom says if James gets pulled from this game, that wouldn't be all bad. A little bit later though, we see James returning now wrapped up like a Christmas present. He can still participate in the season, but is no longer a benefit to their tribe in any physical capacity. This is especially apparent with the immunity challenge when James is forced to be the caller while everyone else is blindfolded. This is the same James who constantly mumbles and has to be subtitled in his past survivor appearances. So yeah, not the greatest choice to be a caller. They lose immunity and back at camp, good knee or not, People want to keep James over Tom. No, not changing, no. Tom. Good. Tom. No matter, about, uh, no matter what's wrong with James' leg. James' leg is, it's, he's still struggling at Tom. Good. Tom. Why? I feel like that's the dumbest move. You can't run. I mean, is that, I can't are run. we being stupid? If, it's, if that's the criteria, then you should have put me out. I feel like that's like, a really risky move. Now, I'm not sure why there's such an anti-Tom sentiment. Is it because he won? The season isn't super clear on this. I don't think that's it because JT won and where's the target on his back? But Candace says, us voting off Tom is dumb and this angers Rupert and he says, you know what? Screw it. Candace is next to go. So we go to tribal council and Tom says, the reasons you all want to keep James over myself is bollocks. Jeff, all this pretense about whether or not it's his physical condition and Rupert saying, well, we think that he's going to be okay. It's all nonsense. He's not being kept for any physical ability. He's being kept because he's a loyal vote. Well, it looks like Tom's pointing the blame, but also that's, that's the, that's he the main thing. tried to vote me out. Partners. And I don't think I'm a weak player in this game. So it's vice versa. So Tom, fingers being pointed at you as one of the people who won't shut up and just do. I don't see that, not during the challenges. I don't think it plays out that way. Um, when he talks about shutting up and doing what you're told, that's his voting strategy. Somebody tells him, shut up, just vote the way I'm telling you. It's not his game strategy. If he's quiet during the challenge, it's probably because he doesn't know what's going on. James, all mess, no class. First vote, Tom. James, Tom, two votes, Tom, James, that's two votes, Tom, two votes, James, Tom, fifth person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains, Tom, that's four, that's enough, Tom, the tribe has spoken. With that, Tom is gone, and like in Season 8 All-Stars, people seem to have come in this season with an agenda and pre-game alliances. Tom ended up with the short end of the stick. Obviously, James is a massive detriment to the tribe after the injury, but everyone completely ignores that, and it's dumb. So what do you think about Tom Westman? Do you want to see him play again? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.